Okay, base clarinetists and low winds for District 13. This is your prepared etude for this Saturday. And, you know, there's just a, a couple things that I think are really important, that I usually think are really important. Um, legato versus staccato. Okay, legato, staccato, and accent. All right, so in the first measure, uh, the eighth notes are staccato, but all the quarter notes are legato. Okay, and um, one of the very first things I wanted to mention, by the way, about the first measure, is uh, that this rhythm, one and and three, is on every single district band sight reading that I've ever, ever seen in my life. So memorize this rhythm, it's gonna come up, okay? Normally, when we see this rhythm in music, we have an accent on the quarter note on the end of one, so it would be one and and three. But they specifically didn't put an accent here, so I'd recommend you don't accent the second note of the piece. Um, there is a, it, so generally speaking, because I want to show the judges that I know the difference between legato and staccato, I play everything legato unless there's a staccato dot on it. So for example, at the end of measure seven, but in measure six, um, so I want to make sure that I'm making it obvious that I understand what the articulative markings are. We do have an we do have a curious articulation marking here at the end of measure ten, in which the quarter note is legato, even though there are no staccato notes around it to differentiate it from. So the tenuto line, which is that dash that's above the note, has three meanings. One is tongue legato. The second is hold a little longer than the printed value, which I wouldn't recommend doing here. <laughs> And then the last one is like, it's like an almost accent. It's like a press as opposed to a full accent. That's what I chose to do here, but you have to interpret how you, you have to choose how you would like to interpret this new tone marking. Um, the last, I think, kind of big important detail to share is that you know, there are a lot of dynamic markers that are given here, and you should try to be as picky as you can with those dynamic markers, M meaning the pianos should all be about the same level. Um, you don't want to be playing one section louder than another. Uh, clearly, measure 9 and 10 are the, are the feature of the piece being the loudest moment in the piece. Um, but specifically, sometimes they're giving you dynamic markers with very specific dynamic goals. So if you look in measure 14, we have a crescendo from subito piano, suddenly piano, to mezzo piano. So the goal of the crescendo is very clearly defined. So you're gonna go from soft to medium soft, okay? But in measure seven, we have a crescendo and a diminuendo that doesn't have any goal in the middle of it. It doesn't tell us that we're crescendoing from mezzo piano to mezzo forte, or mezzo piano to forte or fortissimo, and it's it's up to you to decide how much you want to crescendo and, and where, you know? So you can make it a very even crescendo. You could crescendo a lot at the end, I mean, in the last couple notes. You could crescendo to not as loud. I'm, I'm crescendoing to forte. Um, it, it's really up to you, and this is where you get to have fun. This is where you make it sound like your piece, uh, and which is, if you can make it sound like, if you can make your performance sound distinctive, all right, you're going to score more points, which is part of the audition, all right? Um, I have one last thing specifically for bass client players or for any reed player. A lot of what the judges are trying to hear here in this piece is whether you can cross registers on time, right? You know, any of these, um, these are all moments for you to show that you have your fingers well, well coordinated and that you can arrive hopefully on time. If, you're, if your instrument's out of alignment, then you need to do the best you can because sometimes if the instrument's out of alignment, it doesn't matter how well your fingers are placed, it won't speak. All right? So... I hope hearing the piece is helpful. I hope these little tips are helpful and good luck with your audition on Saturday.